Hello everyone. Today in this lecture, we are going to study the cost of preference shares. In the previous lecture, I have already discussed what is the meaning of preference shares. In this lecture, I am going to solve the illustrations for the cost of preference shares. So before starting, we have already done that the preference shares are divided into two parts. One is redeemable preference shares and another is irredeemable preference shares. Redeemable and irredeemable preference shares has the following points that you all have to remember. First point is that the preference shares carries the fixed rate of dividend and there will be a coupon rate with every preference shares. So you have to remember whenever you have to calculate the dividend, it should always be calculated on the face value. Second is net proceeds from the issue. Net proceeds from the issue means whenever you are issuing the preference shares, what amount you are getting. Whether you are issuing the preference shares at par, whether you are issuing the preference shares at premium, whether you are issuing at discount. Plus, you have to keep in mind the floating cost also. Next, if you are having the redeemable, debenture, redeemable preference shares, then in that cases, the date of maturity should be aware of. And if the preference shares are redeemed at premium, then the amount that is to be paid at the time of maturity, whether the amount is at par or whether the amount is at premium, you should be aware of. So you have to keep all these points in mind while doing the preference shares. So let's go with the first illustration. So the illustration says that the ABC Limited issues 15% preference shares of a face value of $100 each at a floating cost of 4%. You have to find out the cost of capital of preference share if the first is the preference shares are irredeemable and second case is if the preference shares are redeemable after 10 years at a premium of 10%. So the first case we are going to do it when the preference shares are irredeemable. So let's start with the case of the number line. So if this is my number line and when you say that your preference shares are irredeemable, irredeemable means that there is no maturity time period. And when there is no maturity time period, that means the company will never repay back the principal amount or the premium amount to the investor. So company is always going to pay the dividend and the company is going to pay the dividend till infinity. Because since maturity period is not there, so till when the company is there, company will pay the annual dividend every year. But you have to remember these dividends are depending on the profits. So every year we are going to get the dividend as an investor or you can say as a company, a company is going to pay the dividend every year. And at this zero time period, as we have already discussed, zero means your present value, the company is going to issue the preference shares. So there will be the net inflow at zero time period for the company and at the time period 1, 2, 3 till infinity there will be an outflow. So if you will observe there is a regular interval of time after every one year company is paying the dividend and the time period is not known. Plus inflow is at the zero time period and your first outflow for the company is at the end of first year. So it is forming a part of perpetuity. So company is paying dividend till infinity. So all the features of perpetuity are there. So we can say that when the preference shares are irredeemable, it is forming a part of perpetuity. So we have already discussed about the perpetuity. Now in this question, the dividend. Now see over here, it's 15% preference share. So 15 is your coupon rate and the face value is 100. So as we have already discussed that the dividend is always paid on the face value. So if you are going to calculate 15% of 100, it will come out to be 50. Your net proceeds. The shares are issued at a face value and the company has to bear the floating cost of 4%. So company will pay $4 as a floating cost. So net proceeds will be $96. So what the company is going to do? Every year, company is going to pay $15 and the company will pay till infinity. And at this time period, whenever the company has issued the preference shares, the net inflow for the company is $96. So this is your situation. 
present proceed is net inflow is 96 and the outflow from the company's point of view is $15 throughout. So the formula for calculating the present value or you can say the irredeemable debentures is your KP that is cost of preferentials will be equals to dividend paid divided by net proceeds. Your dividend paid is 15 every year and net proceed is 96. So KP will be equals to 15 upon 96 which comes out to be 0.1563 or you can say 15.63%. Now this is a case of irredeemable preferentials. Now we are going to discuss about the redeemable preferentials. Now in this case it's saying the preferentials are redeeming after 10 years. So maturity time period is 10 years and the company is redeeming the preferentials at a premium of 10%. So that means face value is 100 plus 10% 10 of 100 that comes out to be 110 will be your maturity value. So let's go with the solution. Now whenever the preferentials are redeemable, we can do these redeemable part by two different methods. We have already discussed these two methods in the previous video. And all those who have not gone through the previous video, please go through the previous video before watching this. So the first method is appropriation method. So first of all, we are going to do it by approximation method. Now as the name suggests the approximation, so whatever the answer will be, that will be approx. The answer will not be accurate if you are going to do it by approximation method. So the formula for approximation method says, that KP will be equals to dividend paid plus RV minus SV upon N whole divided by RV plus SV divided by 2. So if we are going to see this timeline, what the company is saying that company will pay the dividend every year till 10 years because 10 years is your date of maturity and on the 10th year company will pay dividend as well as the maturity value. Since the maturity value is at a premium of 10%, so 100 plus 10% 10 of 100 will be 110. And at the zero time period, company is getting $96. Now, if we are going to do it, uh, solve it further, the dividend will be your $15. Your redemption value is $110. Your N will be 10 years and sale value will be your $96. Now once I put everything over here, your KP comes out to be 15.92%. So that means this 15.92% will be just an approximation but not the accurate one. Now the second method for solving it is by the present value method. Now whenever we are talking about present value, what we are going to say Everything remains same. Your dividend is $1.15. Redeemable value is $110. N is your 10 years. Sale value is $96. Now over here what they are saying that every year $15 is your dividend and at the end of 10th year maturity value will be $110 and over here it will be $96. Now present value method is saying that whatever amount company is getting at the time of zero time period that means at the time of issue if the company is going to convert all the future cash outflows to the present value that means company is paying $15 at the end of year one again 15 at the end of year two again 15 at the end of year three till 10th year and on the 10th year company is paying 15 as well as 110. So company is saying if the company is going to convert all these outflow into the present value, it should come out to be $96 only. It should not be more than that. So whenever we are converting the future value into the present value, our formula is future value divided by 1 plus R raised to power N. So what we have to do? By present value method, we have to convert all the future values into the present value and add all the values. So if you are going to write it, it will be like this. Your net inflow, net inflow where we have done that is $1.96. Your net inflow, whatever the company is getting, the amount, whatever the inflow is there equals to present value of all the outflows. 
So the first pres uh, present value will be D1 upon 1 plus Kp raised to power 1 because at the end of year 1, companies pay D1 as a dividend. At the end of year 2, companies paying D2 as a dividend. So we have to convert D2 into the present value. So formula becomes D2 upon 1 plus Kp raised to power 2. Similarly, till the nth time period, company will be paying dividend and at the nth time period, company will be paying the redeemable value also. So this Kp we have to find out. Now if I am going to put the values over here, I am getting the equation like this. 96 will be equals to 15 upon 1 plus Kp raised to power 1, 15 upon 1 plus Kp raised to power 2, so on till at the end of 10th year, company is paying $15 as your dividend as well as $110 as your redeemable value. Now over here, you can see that I have given the equation in a horizontal form. But if you are going to do, you can do it by this method also. You can put the values and then solve it. But it will be very tedious. That means it will be very lengthy. So let's go with some shortcut. Now what I am going to do, instead of horizontal, I am going to put every value in a vertical form. Now you can see over here, let's see how I got all these things. Now this was my timeline. Now what I have done, this was my time 0, that means present value when I am issuing the uh, this preferentials. This is year 1, this is year 2 till 10 years. So I have done vertically. I have made first column as an year and I have put 1 to 10 and 10 again. Now the reason why I have put 10 years two times because at the end of 10th year company is paying dividend also and at the end of 10th year company is paying your maturity value also. So either you can write 10 two times or you can write 10 one time and the amount should be equals to 125. You have to add dividend as well as your maturity value. Next, at the end of year 1, company is paying $15 as a dividend. So, I have written 15 as a dividend at the end of 10th year, company is paying 110 as your maturity value. So, that's what I have written it over here. Now, when we talk about the equation, now this was our equation. Your net inflow is 96, 15 upon 1 plus KB raised to power 1. So, year I have already written over here. Your dividend I have already written over here. Your maturity value I have already written over here. Now the left part is 1 upon 1 plus Kp raised to power 1. So instead of Kp let me write 1 upon 1 plus R. So 15 I have written. I am left with 1 upon 1 plus R. So this R will always be in decimals. If it is 10%, R is 10%, so I'll write 1 plus 0 0.10. So what I'm going to do, instead of R, I can also write 1 upon 1 plus R upon 100. Now, if I'm going to take the LCM of 1 up plus R upon 100, it will come like this. So it will be 1 upon 100 plus R upon 100. So what next I'm going to do, I'm going to take this 100 to the numerator. So, which comes out to be 100 upon 100 plus R. So, what I can do, I can write this term as 100 upon 100 plus R multiplied by 15. So, now you will observe that I have written 15 over here. I have to multiply this 15 by this term. So, this term, what I am going to do, I am going to put it over here. Over here, since we are doing the present value method, so this method is done by trial and error method. Since we are not aware about Kp, so I can take any value to be Kp. I can take 10%, I can assume 12%, I can assume 13%, I can assume 15%, even 5%, even 20%. It's up to you. You can assume any number. So in this case, I am assuming my value to be 13%. Now see how we are going to solve it. So as we have already discussed, it will be 1 upon 1 plus Kp and it will come out to be 100 upon 100 plus R. So if my 13% is my Kp, so I can write it like this, 1 upon 1 plus 0.13. It is 1 upon 1 plus Kp. Instead of Kp, I am taking 13%. So 13% can be written as 0.13. 
So what I can do, I can write it like this also, 1 upon 1 plus 13 upon 100. I can take LCM, so it will be 1 upon 100 plus 13 upon 100. And if we are going to do it, it will be 100 upon 113. So what I can write, instead of 1 plus 1 plus kp raised to power 1, I can write 15 upon 100 upon 113. In the next term, I can write 15 upon 113 raised to power 2. Similarly, till 10 years, I can write 100 upon 113 raised to power 10. So now we are going to solve this values. Now see how we are going to solve it. So this is our calculator. Now what we have to do, we have already discussed 13 means 100 upon 113. So I can write it like this. 100 divided by 113. So the first value we are going to get 0 0.884. Now, what I have to do? I have to just press multiply and then equals to. So, second value will be 0 0.783. So, that means if you are going to do 100 upon 113 raised to power 2, your value will be 0 0.783. Now, if you are going to do 100 upon 113 raised to power 3 because for the three, third year, so now again you don't have to press the multiplication sign, you just have to press equals to. It will be 0 0.783. 693 you can see 0 0.693 0 0.693 and again equals to 0 0.613 0 0.54 0 0.48 0 0.42 0 0.37 0 0.33 0 0.29 and since I have written 10 two times so next year also it will be 0 0.29. Now, if we are going to, now what I have to do, we have already discussed that it will be multiplied, 15 multiplied by this value. So, now we have to multiply these two and write it over here. Now, once you multiply it, you have to add everything because the equation says add all the present values. Now, if you are going to add it, your answer will be 113.79. But our sale value was 96. So, that means the assumption that we have done that my KD, my R is 13, that comes out to be wrong. I have to assume some other percentage. Because when we are assuming 13%, your present value should be 113. But my present value was 96 dollars or you can say 96 rupees. So there is a difference over here. So now how we are going to do it? Now we have to just see that this price is being affected by this percentage. So we have two things. One is my price and one is my interest rate R or you can say cost of preference shares. Now these two are interrelated to each other. When we are changing this R, my this present value is changing. We have already discussed when we are doing the debentures that these two have an opposite relationship. When the price, this price is increasing, this value will be decreasing. And when this price will be decreasing, this value will be increasing. So now you can see the value is 96. If the value is 96 and over here when we were using 13% rate of interest or you can say 13% cost of preference shares, my value was 113. Now what I have to do? I have to reduce this value to 96. Now when the sale price or you can say issue price is to be reduced, your value of KP is to be increased. So since price is to be reduced to 96, so your interest rate is to be increased. So that means I have to think some other interest rate which is more than 13%. Now I can just assume 14%, 15%, 16 20 or 25 Any percentage you want, you can assume it. So before moving further, the three tips that you have to remember. The first is if the present value of future cash flows is greater than your net inflow, then interest rate is to be increased. When the present value of future cash flows is less than your net inflow, the interest rate is to be decreased. And if the present value of the future cash flows is equals to net inflow, then interest rate we supposed is correct. Now the next, what I am going to suppose, I am supposing at 
So when I solve it at 17%, these are the present values that I got. And when I am going to multiply it, this will be my value, 92.76. But again, you will observe that my value was 96. So again, my supposition is wrong. This 17 should not be there. Now, at 13%, when I did it by 13%, my value was 113.79. If we are going to move for previously, you can see that at 13%, my value is 113.79. Now, at 17%, my value was 92.76. But my net inflow was 96. So, which comes in between these two values? Between 113 and 92, your value is 96. Now, what, how we are going to do it? We are going to do it by your unitary method. So, that means my cost of preference shares will be 13% plus some percentage or you can say 17% minus some percentage. Because 96 is coming in between these two values. So, percentage will also be between these two percentage. So, either I have to add some percentage to 13 or I have to subtract some percentage from 17. So, the method will be difference between percentage is equal to difference between amount. So, if you are going to take the difference of 13 and 17, it comes out to be 4%. And if you are going to take the difference of 113 and 92.76, it comes out to be 21.03. Now we are we have to do it the unitary method. So at 4% difference, the value difference is $21.03. So if I have to find out the difference at $1, it will be 4% upon 21.03. I have done nothing. I have just take 21.03 on the denominator. Now what we are going to observe, we have to reach at $96. But right now, if I am going to see at 13%, we are at 130. So what we have to do, we have to reduce the amount from 113 to 96. Now, if you will see the difference between these two amount is coming to be $17.79. Take the difference of 117.79 to 96, it comes out to be 17.79. So when we were doing that $1 is a difference of 4 upon 21.09. So $17.79 will be the value of 4 upon 21.09 multiplied by 17.79 which comes out to be 3.38%. So that means we have to increase the percentage 13% plus 3.38. So our answer will be 16.38%. So whenever we are doing by 16.38, we will get more accurate as compared to approximation method. Now let's verify it, whether the value that we got it is correct or not. So when I solve this at 16.38, these are my present value factors. And when I am going to multiply these factors with the 15 there's a dividend and 110 as your maturity value. My value comes out to be 95.61 and my sale value was 96. Now you can observe that these are near about these two values. So my KP comes out to be 16.38 by your present value method. That's all for today's lecture. Hope you are able to understand how we are going to solve the cost of preference shares with the help of redeemable as well as irredeemable cases. Thank you. Uh, for further reference, you can refer my book. Thank you.